welcome to another pawn news update we got a lot to talk about tonight and uh, so we're gonna move pretty quick because this week is a huge week it is free per view number three or three per view as it has been suggested that it should be called and i like it i like it a lot bad puns always good in my book but we got a lot to talk about in terms of the free per view or three per view uh, so let's talk about it. Let's do behind the scenes stuff first and let's talk about Scott. Now we're going to get into what happened last week, but uh, I did mention on the show Scott got a little bit of a nerf and I do want to talk a little bit about that because obviously the impact has already been felt uh, and witnessed in frog wrestling. So what happened was I took a look at Scott's stats. Uh, it's not maybe a big secret, but if you didn't know, I'll let you know uh, that when I am making a character, I sort of just pick a wrestler and I copy their moves, their stats, everything over based on who I want to kind of be the template for that wrestler. And because I wanted Scott to be like a boss, uh, I picked Roman Reigns. He has the highest power rating of anybody in WWE 2K23, and it just made sense to do that. It, you know, it was that or pick somebody like Brock Lesnar, who's not quite as high on stats, but very similarly, you know, highly durable, uh, a, a big terror in the ring. But... Every time I ran matches behind the scenes, which is something I do, I test matches quite frequently. I've basically seen what we're going to be doing on the free preview multiple times already, just to kind of make sure that the matches are good. And sometimes I still get surprised. The AI will still do something unexpected or a match will just suddenly be extremely one sided where maybe the three or four times that I ran it, it was nice and even. But one thing was universally true with Scott. He always squashed people it was kind of insane every now and then something truly weird and miraculous would happen in testing and i would see a victory happen against scott but by and large anytime scott was in a match the match wasn't even good and it's getting to be frustrating because logically the championship match should be your main event uh you know or at least somewhere in there as a spectacle so to have Scott matches come out and last a couple minutes and nobody gets any offense in, it's just not fun. And this really presented itself, unfortunately for Bo, uh, during Bo's matches. Obviously, everybody wanted Bo to win or at least do well. Uh, Bo was in the chat watching, rooting for himself. He asked for a rematch. And I kept hoping that maybe we'd get one of those miracle instances where the opponent just did kind of strangely well. And it never happened. Scott squashed him pretty much all the time. And even on matches where Scott was kind of on the back foot, uh, you know, we saw a Brian Ibbett versus Scott fight where it almost looked like Brian Ibbett was going to win. Scott still always pulled it out and the matches suffer for it. So I looked in the stats to see what exactly was going on. And I suspect that because when it's not me playing it, WWE 2K23 is designed to be a video game. And so the concept of Roman Reigns as a boss is actually kind of true. They've programmed him in such a way to where his AI and his stats are going to present the biggest challenge to people playing that game. So that when you're really good at WWE 2K23, you're still presented a challenge when you go for the title. It's not just a walk in the park for you. And the stats for Scott were obscene. Almost everything was maxed out as high as it can go. Very few things are 100%. You can't set a wrestler to guaranteed kick out of a pin, but you can make it extraordinarily likely that they will. And so a lot of those stats were basically at the top and the highest they could go. I didn't want to go through and completely nerf Scott to the ground, but I did want to make him human so that we could see decent matches with him. And so I tweaked very small things at first that seemed to make sense. I made his punches more powerful because his punching offense, people always comment, it looks like he's got metal on his fists, kind of made sense. So I actually gave him a buff there. Um, but for the most part, I just bumped a couple stats down 
and I tested the matches, and he was still impossible to beat. So I went through and I did a near universal slight tweak of everything. If everything was maxed out, anything that was maxed out, I bumped down by a little bit. Uh, and that lowered his overall power level from 99 to 98, as it's represented in the game. I wanted to keep him at the same power level, because to me, if you don't lower it enough to adjust that power level, you're still playing in the same ballpark. So I went back through, and I remaxed out several of his stats until we hit that 99 threshold again, and that's where I stopped. And when I started testing at that point, Scott matches were all of a sudden really good. Uh, he went from universally winning to being an extremely good, challenging fight. I've seen him win. I've seen him lose. And that's kind of where I want him to be. In fact, it's kind of where it makes sense for the storyline right now because Scott's losing all his allies. He's kicked nearly everybody out of core. Brian Dunaway is still supporting him. He's got these impossibly high standards. As of right now, he hasn't brought anybody new into core. He got pinned by Mark Spagnolo in a match that he was really looking to win. It kind of makes sense that this would have shaken Scott to not be quite the insane boss that he was before. At least that's how the story is going to present itself. Uh, if he just consistently loses over and over again and can't get a win, I'll tweak some stuff for sure. Uh, I don't want Scott to completely fall off and now be in a position where he can't win a match. His matches should be really good. Um, but I also don't want it to be just squash after squash where you just see him always win and it's never very entertaining. And hopefully that's reflected as well. And hopefully you all enjoy the matches going forward. And yes, I know I did it just in time for my match with him. The irony of that is not lost on me. But I think regardless of what happens this week and regardless of who the champions are going forward, this will be a net positive for matches that Scott is in. So I do look forward to seeing that. I've also noticed a weird thing. I can't say for sure if it's true, but I do think that sometimes the AI is better in title matches than it is in non-title matches. Um, I, I don't know if that's an actual feature of the game but I'm paranoid thinking it because I will test things on non-title matches so I don't have to move titles around. Then I do the title match, and it turns into a squash out of nowhere. So you never really know in that regard. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is we're going to be trying something new during the free preview for tag team matches again. Uh, this has been, you know, kind of the field that's been the hardest to figure out, the hardest to uh, make good matches out of, and I think I might have finally found what works best. Uh, last week during the tournament, we did the tornado tag with the knockout ability on, and I don't think it made for the best matches, but I did notice it's actually really easy to knock out your opponent, and then I thought, well, wait a minute. Why don't we just go back to traditional tag team matches, turn on the ability to knock out your opponent, and make them the elimination style matches? Now it's going to look and feel more like a traditional tag team match, but even if we get into that constant interrupting tag mess that we can sometimes get into, now there's always the chance that someone's going to get knocked out, and that's going to shift the dynamic wildly. So... I think that this is going to make for better matches. I've tested it. I tried a couple different things to see what we could do for this big championship match this week. And this was easily the most entertaining of what I saw. So we're going to be trying it at the three per view. Let me know what you think of it, because if people generally like what we do at this three per view better, I think this is what we'll do going forward from now on. Um, I definitely think it's a more entertaining version of a tag team match. And it still feels like a tag team match. When it's just everybody fighting, it just feels like a brawl. And it starts to feel silly to say, oh, it's a TMS tag title match. Nobody ever tags, but that's what it is. So I think it's going to overall be a lot better. Uh, if you have other ideas, certainly let me know in the comments. I'm considering lots of options for this. And I would love to get the women's tag titles 
built and going and a thing, but I'm not going to do that until I feel like tag matches in general are more fun to watch. Okay, that's it for behind the scenes news. That was a lot. I hope you enjoy enjoyed the uh, peek behind the curtain. There's going to be another one coming up real soon. Uh, it'll be its own video. It's not going to be in Pond News, but I'm looking forward to getting into that shortly. Let's recap what happened last week on Frog Wrestling. So one of the big events that we had was, of course, the Tag Team Championship Tournament. We basically had four teams, uh, two matches to determine who would go on to the finals. And uh, I didn't tell you who the teams were right out of the gate, which led to a nice surprise for our first match, which was the Mod Syndicate being Ben and Tom against, surprise, surprise, and now leaving the Mod Syndicate, Tanner and Brian Ibbett. So officially, as far as news goes, Tanner has left the Mod Syndicate and Hopefully, we'll be hearing from Tanner on what all that entails post free per view, uh, where he can either brag as champ or we'll see. But Tanner's officially out. Can't blame him. Certainly wasn't treated well within the mod syndicate. Tom focusing more on taking Ben under his wing and the successes that Ben has enjoyed as part of the mod syndicate. However, there's another person in Frog Wrestling that that sounds an awful lot like, and that is Brian Ibbett. So Tanner and Brian Ibbett teamed up. They were successful at defeating the Mod Syndicate. The next tag match we saw was Grinding Gear, Kyle and Garrett trying once again to get after those tag team titles. They're always so close, so close within reach and just not quite. Uh, they were going up against Nash Maggard of the Solar Mines and Vorel Rasvim Kurik of the Heroes of the Wastes from There Will Be Dungeons. And Garrett and Kyle managed to defeat their fictional doppelgangers. Although I guess Nash isn't technically Garrett's fictional doppelganger, but, you know, Kyle and Varel are. So they moved on, and then that led to our final match, which did see... Tanner Goodman, Brian Ibbett, triumphant over Grinding Gear, still one step behind for Garrett and Kyle. We'll have to see what's next for them. But a great chance at redemption for Brian Ibbett and Tanner Goodman, who've had a rough journey, both of them, to get to this spot. Uh, after that, we did see a big match between Scott Johnson and Mark Spagnolo, and the champion has officially tasted defeat for the first time in singles match for a long time. I think it was actually Kyle who beat him for the... That was that was way, way, way back. Uh, that was quite a ways back. I think Kyle managed it in a, a one-off non-title match. But uh, Mark making a mark in Frog Wrestling uh, with that victory. And I heard a lot of people say... Oh, now it should be a uh, triple threat for the title. Look, I hear you, but we're doing long form. We got to have something happen if Scott retains. There's got to be a story there. And we got to have a story there if John wins on who might be coming after that belt next besides just rematches or whatnot. So it's going to be interesting to see. Definitely keep your eye on Mark. I have been shocked at how well he's done. Uh, it feels like a wrestler who is either like on fire and unbeatable uh, in terms of, you know, his victories over Scott. He had a huge victory over Bo. Or then all of a sudden he gets in a match against Brian Dunaway and looks like he doesn't belong in that fight at all. But maybe that's a testament to Dunaway. Dunaway has also been incredibly impressive. So we're going to have to see how all this looks post the three per view. Uh, after that, we did see Kim Johnson versus Hope, the end of the women's random match type tournament, and we got the Iron Man match, which in terms of WWE 2K23 means a 15-minute most pinfalls within that time limit match, and I was nervous. I thought it was going to be an hour or 30 minutes. 15 ended up being perfectly reasonable, and it ended up being one of the best matches I've ever seen. I pulled the audience while they watched it, and it was almost universally agreed that this was a great match 
that people wanted to see more of. And as a result, the final title match next week is going to be an Iron Man match as well. So, you know, kudos. Uh, the winner there, I guess it's worth noting, was Kim Johnson. Uh, she has certainly been in this position before, having to try and climb to the top of a tournament, was successful at it, and then ultimately couldn't defeat Kristen before. Now she's getting another shot at trying to get that gold when it comes to Jocelyn. Uh, and that was basically it for uh, last week. That tournament took up a lot of our match time. That's what we covered. Let's just lock in and hear what we're going to be doing next week at the free preview. This is your official preview of the full card, what you can expect this week at the free preview. So we are going to be opening with the TMS Tag Team Championship match as Tanner and Brian Ibbett challenge the French Confection for the TMS Tag Team titles. This is going to be a tag elimination style match with the ability to knock out your opponent turned on for expedience, we'll say. So that does mean that if someone gets knocked out, if there's a pinfall, if there's a submission, it keeps going until an entire team has been eliminated. I think it's going to make for a really good match. At least I hope so, because tag matches can sometimes overstay their welcome. But I'm looking forward to it. Then we are going to be having our Women's Championship Money in the Bank Battle Royale match. If you watched Pawn News a little bit ago, we did announce we're not doing ladder matches for these anymore. I think ladder matches are kind of lame in the game. We're doing Battle Royales, and we are going to be taking six competitors and... Generally, we are going to be favoring kind of the lower card. I like the idea that winning the Money in the Bank briefcase can give somebody who maybe doesn't win a ton of matches a chance to challenge for the title. So, you know, wrestlers like Fast Grandma are going to be favored in this type of match over somebody like Martha, who by her own merits tends to be in the title picture on her own. Now, that said, Kristen has lost a lot of matches recently. She went from unbeatable to a bunch of losses, and so Kristen will also be one of those six. There you go. I gave you I gave you one third of who's going to be in there. Uh, Fast Grandma and Kristen confirmed. We'll have to see who the other four people are when we get to the free preview. Uh, in addition, we are going to have our Dragon Beef title match. Now, Ben has been a little arrogant. If you may remember, we did an Elimination Chamber match where uh, myself won to challenge for the Dragon Beef title. Now, Scott later called me out. I decided to pursue the Frog Pants Championship based on Scott's taunting. And uh, now who's Ben's opponent? Well, Ben thinks this means he doesn't have to defend his title. And I'm here to tell Ben, sorry, buddy, that's not true. In the event that the person who won the Elimination Chamber match is unable to compete, a person who took second place in that tournament will be the new challenger. So I can officially announce here that Kyle Ferguson will be challenging Ben for the Dragon Beef Championship. Another opportunity for Kyle and Ben to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Kyle can't escape this title, man. He is in it. All the time. After that, we are going to be debuting our men's Frog Pants Championship Money in the Bank briefcase Battle Royale match. This is a new category. Uh, it's different from the Dragon Beef case. Uh, this will allow you to challenge for the Frog Pants Championship, unlike the Dragon Beef case, which is only for the Dragon Beef Championship. And much like what we're doing with the women's Battle Royale, this is going to favor lower card uh, wrestlers and uh, allow them a shot at the title. I will confirm that we are going to have a new debut. Someone new is going to be joining for this match. And uh, we're going to see who else decides to enter and fill one of those six slots. That is going to lead to the 15-minute Iron Man match for the Frog Pants Women's Championship. That is going to be Kim Johnson challenging Jocelyn Kearney for the title. 
It's going to be 15 minutes. Whoever scores the most pinfalls or submissions in that time will be crowned the new or continuing women's champion. And that will take us to our main event, the Frog Pants Championship title match between myself challenging Scott Johnson. We have finally seen some blood in the water. I certainly smell it. Challenge has certainly been accepted. I think it's time. Will this week be the week where the king falls? We're going to have to find out. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. I will catch you all next time for another Pond News update, and hopefully we'll see you there live for Free Preview 3. That's going to be on Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific. <laughs> Hold on. They did a time change. Uh, yeah, it's going to be at 4 p.m. Pacific. That'll be the time. We'll see you there. Thanks, everybody, for joining me. Till next time. Bye, everybody.